Now, speaking of, of pioneers, Enel is a pioneer uh, in Europe, but not only, also worldwide. So I would like to ask you, what are your fo- the focus point according to your, let's say, uh, area of expertise? In particular, in the area of expertise in uh, global distribution, yeah. uh, where we are present in eight countries and so <laughs> two continents exactly. uh, for the time being, but we have also idea to expand a little bit. So it's uh, Europe and uh, South America. I think that's, uh, we always, again, a different level, but we, what we are trying to do is, uh, to reach the same level for all our distributors. So we, mm-hmm. we want that all the innovation will be implemented, uh, for everyone, not just for yeah. our area of Italy, that it was the starting point, but for all our distributors. And the pillar by which we uh, try to implement is uh, uh, to do open innovation, so in order not to uh, stick in our business, but to uh, find a way that uh, also the other can contribute. Um, to always uh, do that with our supply chain, because it's important when you do investment to have everyone on board and the supplier, the first stakeholder. Yeah. Um, and also to bring uh, um, participation from the customer sides, as we may, I was mentioning before. And the other point is uh, uh, another big pillar is about resilience. Um, mm-hmm. Why? Because uh, it's clear that the, it's changing the challenging, but uh, the old job of distributor with the different complexity is there. Um, the resilience is not just about uh, climate change, weather condition that can create disruptive phenomenon, but yeah. it's also about... Uh, market disruptions exactly and the market disruption will happen more and more because the behavior of the use of electricity uh from some area is not still known like again electric vehicle we don't know exactly how the people will use it that will be the behavior and this means that we need to be prepared for all these changes and be flexible yes Uh, and the opportunity is to have a resilience also in that respect that's Mm -hmm. uh transform the network into resilience, uh, smart grids uh, that can answer to different type of phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, as you said, Enel is active in various markets. I'm sure that there are a lot of differences in these markets from mentality to politics to, to, to uh, rules and regulations. Um, and also infrastructure. I mean, it's different to uh, have uh, a policy um, or um, to address, let's say, the northern European market when it comes to EVs and a difference in the south. For example, I know in Greece, we don't have uh, that many uh, electric pods, for example, whereas in Denmark, it's full. <laughs> uh, what are, how do you cope with the differences? In, uh... Normally, what we try to do is to, to use always the best practice uh, the, and yeah. sort of internal competition that yeah. brings always uh, operational excellency, but also um, the, the network uh, at the edge no, of the innovation and the status of uh, implementation in technology. And in, in some occasion, uh, you can find a surprise, no? Like, for example, uh, uh, big city in South America are deploying uh, lots of public transportation, electric vehicle, more than in Europe, at least the exactly. southern part of Europe where we are present. So, so this is why I think that uh, there is not a lesson from the Europe to other parts of no, the no, world, but it's really a level of a, uh, trying to puts on the table uh, really best practice on all the aspects, uh, mm-hmm. excellency, uh, methodology, processes, uh, and to find a compromise how you can collect the best uh, and implement the best uh, for everyone in the shortest time is possible. This mm-hmm. is why when we speak about objective and target, we also always refer to global target because yeah. we want a global target. We don't want the, that's the... Uh, the level of quality of the network uh, is different uh, from a country to another country because in the end, uh, customer uh, should have the same perception uh, of reliability, of quality of services, uh, whatever is also the regulatory perspective. Uh, then it's clear that uh, uh, in terms of time and implementation, there could be some difference, uh, but the objective, the targets uh, should be the same for everyone. They should, but on the other hand, how can they be when you have a different level of, um, uh, let's say, progress in every country? I think that in terms of technology, mm-hmm. there is not any more these points. Um, the only really, real no... point, in, yeah. the technology is available. Yeah. Then it's a question of economy, most yeah. probably. Definitely. So about affordability, then it's clear that uh, uh, you need to face, we are a regulated business and you 
could face uh, these topics mm-hmm. with some regulator. Um, and then it's a, a point uh, about how, how, uh, how many years you take to deploy a certain technology, uh, but uh, the target again uh, should be very clear. So mm-hmm. there is no discount in terms of uh, uh, doing a network less efficient uh, uh, and even internally, no, less uh, um, affordable uh, or less resilient. Then it's a question how you will do that for in term and which and which type of dialogue do you have with the regulator but i think that uh, regulator likes to listen also lesson from the others yes and like to be also in that respect uh, uh, leaders on some aspect mm-hmm. and you will always find in this dialogue uh, some aspect that they will prefer to deploy uh, in due time so mm, it's a question of time, but it's not so about uh, common understanding of what is the, um, the common goal for everyone. I particularly like what you said, what you mentioned about not uh, having Europe not trying to educate someone, uh, but to talk on equal uh, levels uh, with uh, the authorities uh, the, uh, and also the people of, uh, of let's say, other conti- continents. Um, you have done that, right? Uh, with, uh, from your position... You are in a position that you need to talk with various people. Uh, can you tell us which is the most demanding, let's say, area and which one yeah. is the, <laughs> just to, yeah, and which one was the easiest? No, from my perspective, it's clear that um, um, in South America, we have a yeah. lot of challenges, but not just because of the area. No. We have also no. um, megalopolis to manage, like yeah. Sao Paulo. So we have no comparison with Europe. Uh, in some respect, the challenge for them is, even higher, that's mm-hmm. at least for the, the type of country where we are in Europe and the type of sites. Uh, um, so when I deal with my colleagues, I really am amazed on which type of effort, which type of responsibility they have uh, to manage that type of, uh, of city, big city, large mm-hmm. city, like Buenos Aires or Lima. You are speaking really like million of people. Uh, uh, yes, a lot of di- different type of uh, uh, economies within a yes. megalopolis. So, really challenge that uh, in Europe uh, we don't fa- we do not face. No. So, in this respect, really lesson learned, uh, point mm-hmm. taken from them. <laughs> so, you listen what they do, and you really um, you take, the lesson. So you yes. take the lesson. You take the lesson, no? <laughs> in the, on, the, on this respect, then it's clear that uh, uh, in terms of uh, experiencing. Uh, uh, CO2 emission trading scheme or, or experiencing uh, uh, some regulatory aspects uh, uh, there are some lessons learned in Europe, just yes. to give you an example Smart Meter yeah. Smart Meter, we have been a Zener, a front runner even before regulator were placing on the table uh, the, the needs and the scope uh, in the directive uh, today Europe uh, is a front runner with respect to other heron continents uh, and we have some lessons learned because we did we did well, we did some mistakes, so the lesson learned is also mm-hmm. on different aspects. And we can bring these uh, on other tables in South America to regulators because they want to listen, how we did, to our colleagues. Um, uh, but most probably we need to tailor to their reality because, yes. again, the, but it's, and again, it's not a question of technology. You can bring the technology from one side or another exactly. side of the globe nowadays. More is a question about, for example, the affordability and so how, which type of uh, effort uh, the customer base is available to do or is possible for them to do or which type of um, needs because sometimes the needs uh, of uh, uh, some deployment could be different. For example, you, you could have different use of electricity mm-hmm. and you could uh, have the, the appliance uh, uh, should be done in a different way because they, they want uh, um, uh, different modality of use of the of the meters. Uh, so this is the way we do. We sit on a table, yes. we bring the experience, and we listen exactly the needs. And then we tailor to the convenience and the scope of that area. But I cannot say that it's an area more difficult than a head area, yeah. a part of this uh, uh, peculiarity megalopoly yeah. that's really an incredible and uh, yeah. for a European uh, born uh, yeah, it's strange, person yes. when, you, when you live uh, on the not just traveling uh, but uh, on the um, professional perspective you really see the 
you really yeah. go into the detail of what means living in a in big city like that and what means uh, also the difficulty that uh, the, mm -hmm. the community you know has to yeah. face but on the other aspect i cannot really say that so there are uh, difficult colleagues That's really uh, where good. i will to deal with. That's really nice, uh, nice and refreshing to hear. Uh, you, you mentioned smart meters, you mentioned new technologies. Uh, how difficult is for the uh, customer, for the consumer to accept or not new technologies? I mean, I know, for example, for AI, that AI, uh, artificial intelligence is considered the devil sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I know. Uh, and uh, people can have some issues or be afraid a little bit. Uh, understandably, maybe, but uh, how do you see that? You can incur in some barrier, no? So the typical barrier for a te new technology is again on the economical perspective, yes. uh, on health and safety, or on the perspective of the uh, like artificial intelligence. So even some meter to be seen uh, in terms of uh, uh, protection, no? Mm -hmm. uh, something that is invading my. Yes. Um, it's clear that again there is not one recipe, so the, there is not the standard customer at which you can address uh, uh, how to explain uh, that all these barriers in the reality are not uh, affecting him. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and the position is, so again, to listen at why there is this perception. Because there could be a cultural things, there could be again, something very local, mm -hmm. um, or there could be... The, the typical uh, average uh, reaction uh, to this uh, deployment of technology. And you need to be very simple and uh, uh, sharing uh, the advantage of your technology with the customers uh, on one side uh, and like, always explaining in a, the best way you can uh, why this technology could help on their side and which type of benefit. So everything has to be tailored since the very beginning uh, with a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. There is not uh, a technology living standalone basis just because it's bringing innovation, uh, but the way you calibrate and you evaluate uh, is component, component of several aspects. So sustainability should be embedded in that. Exactly. You cannot say to someone, okay, this is innovation is bringing to you just uh, uh, less time for... Uh, responding or to give me your signal or data, but you should explain, for example, how Spermita could bring less losses, and these less losses means less emissions. Mm -hmm. So, participating with him, uh, the complete benefits that the technology could bring on the table, not just on the perspective, the pure perspective of the innovation, but mm -hmm. uh, about sus how sustainable. You cannot do without that. Otherwise, it's a uh, just technology and it's yeah. not enough in my opinion so. absolutely and you think we're pioneers in that sector too the new technology um, I mean Europe I, I think yeah, yeah. We, we, we I think there are some aspects so that so the commission is already on the table mm -hmm. uh, uh, finding struggling with the KPI on measuring sustainable things that is the first point you can just put a label of sustainability but you need to demonstrate that so. yes uh, sometimes it's difficult it's not easy to be done um, probably what is still missing is then how to simplify the messages because probably it's still very technical things among experts. They are struggling how to find the compromise in between KPI and uh, effectiveness uh, that this KPI can bring on the table also of the financing instrument. Mm -hmm. And now probably the third lex is still missing is how to translate this into very simple and clear message in order mm -hmm. to that everyone can also contribute because sometimes you can have also contribution from the community in that respect what they consider yeah. as KPI most relevant for them and mm -hmm. probably the te technical table was not uh, considering that <laughs> yeah it makes sense um, new technologies bring into mind immediately data the usage of data and also the rights uh, of people that the using the, the, the users of data might compromise. Uh, so my question to you is, if you had to choose between privacy or sustainability, what would you choose and why? <laughs> I, I could answer that, but it's not just, you should just from the privacy into sustainability. What means that the, the, the respect of privacy is granted, yeah. but you can do a lot of things uh, 
within the respect of privacy. I when you agree. have a data that is a collective data, you respect the privacy. Mm -hmm. But again, you can really let understand people with using even the collective data, even you can, yes. because it's not a question of what you can and you cannot do. Mm -hmm. uh, this can contribute to the community. Just give an example. We have data that can contribute within the sector to create more efficiency and so more sustainability or to other sector. We are putting a lot of sensor on our network. This sensor, just give a practical example, could use it to detect vegetation, no? mm -hmm. growth of vegetation, because it's important to, uh, to know growth of vegetation, uh, to intervene in due time to cut the vegetation and to have the, the poles uh, free of vegetation. But this data of vegetation can be used for other scoop that is exactly. for the community. This is not about privacy for the vegetation, but <laughs> just understand that some data can be useful within the sector, for other sector in a cross-sector way, and also for research, for innovation that is really out of the energy sector or the typical standard cross-sector where you deal with. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we covered a lot of, uh, a lot of issues in our conversation. I'm sure that I could ask you a hundred more questions, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I need to stop here. Uh, and thank you. Thank you so much for being That's here today. Thank, Thank you, you to you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.